Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Today I have some super sweet Cinderella themed cards featuring the Colorado Craft Company Anita Jerem release. Um, super adorable, large scale Anita Jerem images that completely fill the card. I'm going to create some super simple backgrounds using yes, you guessed it, some moon masks from Tim Holtz. If it's a moon stencil or mask, I am here for it. First, I did take images from the two stamp sets I'm using today, which are uh, Fairy Godmother and Magic Time. And I'm gonna lay them out on four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels of smooth white cardstock and kind of figure out uh, where I want my images to go. And then from there, where do I want to place my masks? And I did end up using the medium sized mask. I thought I would use the smallest, but as I was looking and kind of working with the product, I realized I think the small is just too small for these particular images. This is where laying out your product really comes in handy or laying out your stamps or dies or whatever it is you're using, because sometimes it will really um, help influence what you choose to use for the rest of the card. Because these images are big and bold and they do fill up a lot of the space, I opted for a very simple background. I wanted a magical feel. I wanted that Cinderella feel. Um, and so I took the mask, laid it down and added tumbled glass. And then I don't really need the mask right now while I add some broken china. This is gonna be all a blue on blue type of background. Both cards are gonna be created exactly the same, both card backgrounds. I'm just gonna switch up the images from the Colorado Craft Company sets. Then I'm gonna take go back to tumbled glass and we are going to apply that just to the moon. I'm not really taking it all the way out to the edge because it kind of gives it that beautiful moon glow. I have really loved kind of trying to create some different looks for moons and I think the moon mask is super versatile. Not just for Christmas with, with Santa and his sleigh going across, not just for Halloween, um, but lots of different card designs. I've used it before for some everyday or, or birthday or whatever kind of occasion cards. And I think it works really lovely for these Cinderella themed cards or Anita Jerem images. It wouldn't even have to be Cinderella uh, today. Next, I'm gonna take Prize Rip, or I took Rustic Wilderness while I was talking and I added that to the ground just to kind of give it a nice grounded, uh, grass type of look, something that will ground the images. And then I'm taking prize ribbon and working that into my design for the deeper, darker effect, all away from the moon so that the glow of the moon still kind of stays prominent up there in the upper right corner of the design. Once I have my inks blended the way I want them to, I am gonna place my background in a splatter box. I just use a plastic box that I have. Oh, first, I'm so sorry. I did take the layering stencil from the moon masks. I did not ink this up with any additional ink. There's just a little black soot left on my Distress Oxide blending brush. And I added that to my moon. And then I'm gonna go back with tumbled glass over the top to really kind of mute that and soften the edges of that just a little bit. Just like so. Then I'm gonna take this to my plastic splatter box and replacing the moon mask over the top of the moon to protect it from the splatter, we are gonna splatter the background first with white gouache. And I always put a little white gouache in my splatter box, uh, add a little water to it with a distress sprayer or mini mister, or you can even just drop some in there if you wanted to, but that just kind of gives me more control till I get until I get the right consistency. And then I'm gonna splatter the entire background with this white using a small paintbrush. And that's gonna give like that magical stars in the sky or the glitter, you know, or fairy dust from the wand. That's really what I'm going for here is I want that very magical type of feeling for my background. White gouache, I have another video here on my channel talking about the difference between gouache and white paint and why I like gouache better. Um, neither one, there's, one isn't really better than the other. I just prefer this because it does stay nice and bright white. And so I'm gonna splatter that all over. You can see it's little teeny tiny splatters. I love it. It really does kind of give that magical flair. And then um, in addition, I'm gonna take some liquid stardust from 
Lawn Fawn, and I'm gonna splatter that. And that's gonna give a very subtle, shimmery splatter in addition to the white splatter. And then I'm gonna set that aside to completely dry. I decided to do two cards today, so we are gonna do the exact same thing for the second background and then set it aside to dry as well. The images from Fairy Godmother and Magic Time were stamped on smooth white cardstock using Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink, and I'm coloring them in with Copic markers. The Copic markers I'm using are listed down below the video here on YouTube, as well as on my blog for easy reference. I do want to mention that at the time of recording and filming this, or creating the cards, I guess I should say, I did not have the coordinating dies for these images, so I will be using my brother's scan and cut. Coordinating dies are available. I would recommend them. You will see that in especially the Cinderella image over on the left where she's holding her dress out. With the coordinating die, it's going to die cut those little inset pieces where her arms are holding the dress out. In my card, because I had to use the scan and cut, I could have fussy cut it, but I'm not fussy cutting these. You guys know how I feel about fussy cutting. <laughs> um, because of that, it didn't die cut those out. So it's gonna be kind of some bold white areas. I just want you to be aware of that because the dies are gonna cut nice and close. You know, you know, If you have followed me with any of the uh, cards I've made with Anita Jerem, Colorado Craft Company stamps before, you know that I highly recommend their dies. They cut close to the image and they cut out all those little nooks and crannies, which I really, really appreciate. I am doing the Fairy Godmother's dress for both in shades of blue violet so it's going to be very purpley and pink and of course Cinderella will be blue unless she is in her maid costume which is going to be very dull. I love the giant pumpkin here. Something else to note in the coordinating dies for these sets only the fairy godmother cuts out so you can set her on the pumpkin you could set her on something else if you want to. The pumpkin itself from this image, it is all one image, but the pumpkin does not die cut with the coordinating dies. So while you're gonna see mine completely die cut because I use the brother scan and cut, it won't do that with the dies from Colorado Craft Company. I always just wanna make sure that you know that um, when you're looking at the video and looking at the product so you know why it is the way it is. I love these blue violets here. After I have my ink blend and I'm gonna put in a little red violet, for my pink, I am going to take a lot of care with embellishing. These images are big and bold. There's not tons and tons of different things added to these cards. So all the little things you can do to embellish your stamped images, to embellish your background, are really gonna make a huge difference in the finished result. And in that, this case, I'm gonna take white opaque pens. I'm also going to take a uh, Stardust glitter pen from Sakura that I really really love and we're going to add sparkles uh, To the outfits all of the outfits and little white drops. I'm going to take a white colored pencil This is a polychromos colored pencil um, and add a little bit of detail with that as well It kind of helps tone down and mute some stuff like the little underskirt for the fairy godmother here I like the little bit of detail it adds and then the Stardust glitter pen is what I'm adding now, and it's sparkly. Everything about these cards is super sparkly. To me, this just really uh, said Cinderella. And then I'm gonna use my white pen to add some detail as well. And I'm gonna continue like this. I did not color the entire pumpkin. That's because it's gonna hang off the edge. There's no way, unless I just use this image only, that it's going to fit on a standard A2 size card base. Now, if you're creating a five by seven card, for sure, this w images will fit a lot easier. I was trying to find ways. I like to use these big, bold images from Colorado Craft Company on a standard A2 size card to show how they can be used and how by cutting off part of the pumpkin, you're not really losing the feel of the design, I guess I wanna say. So lots of sparkles. I did have to add a little bit more orange <laughs> once I got to my card and I realized um, I didn't quite have enough colored, but that's not a big deal. 
but I love the sparkles. I think they add so much to the design. Not super delighted with my larger white sparkles on my pumpkin, and I will show you how I fix that in a little bit. Instead of re-stamping the whole thing, there are ways to fix almost anything on a card. For the mice, I am using E40, 43, 44, and 47 for all of the mice. Little R00 for insides of the ear, the cheek on our cute little mice images. And then I love the little fairy wand. That is some yellow red colors. I'm gonna use a little uh, BG90 and 93 for the apron and then E8184 for her dress. Maybe even a little E87. I sort of felt like her apron and her dress, there wasn't a great cutoff for the arm of her dress. So I took a black pen and draw, drew in the sleeve or like the cuff of her sleeve. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of alter it to fit my purposes. Here's the E87, just very, very light. And then E84, we're gonna pull that color out. So it's a, her dull little maid costume, which I think is funny and cute. I love that. I love that it's the Anita Jara mice in the Cinderella theme. It's super, super fun. And then, yep, all of those same earth tone colors for the mouse with R00 for insides of ears and cheeks. The broom, we're gonna do all in shades of earth tones and yellows. I couldn't get all four images because they're big and bold to fit on that half sheet of Nina cardstock, so I grabbed a scrap, which is what I used here to stamp my final image. And then we'll move on to the other two images as well after we've added a little highlighting, a little detail. Obviously for the maid costume, we don't want that one to sparkle because she hasn't uh, become Cinderella. Well, she is Cinderella, but hasn't become the princess, pardon me, yet. Now I took that pencil, you might have seen me using the pencil to draw the whisker lines up to the mouse. That is a tip for the brother scan and cut. Otherwise, it's going to cut around each of those little lines, which I don't want it to do. I want it to cut as a continuous line. So I drew those pencil lines in and then I'll erase them after I have die cut. I am using some blue colors for Cinderella's dress. I really took care with coloring in the costumes for these images. I wanted it to have that Cinderella feel. This is the image that is not going to die cut, you know, close enough to how the actual dies cut. It will cut out those little areas for her arms. So I'm kind of anxious to probably restamp color and add that to my card um, when the dies come. I like these blue colors. I definitely wanted to have the Cinderella vibe, so that's why we went blue. But she does have some cute little embellishments on her skirt, and I did take a little bit of green, which is what I'm using for the base along some of the images to color those in. Um, I'm using my white pencil to add detail to her dress, but her flowers on her dress are going to be blue. I didn't want those to stand out in like pink or, or yellow or anything like that. I wanted them to be blue. And of course the underskirt for hers as well is going to be a little bit lighter. And she has her blue, well, I did a very light blue for her glass slippers. A little white all along the underskirt just kind of help give it a little detail and then the sparkles all of the sparkles with the stardust glitter pen lots and lots of teeny tiny little dots all over her dress because of course it's Cinderella we have to make it all sparkly and this is one of my favorite ways to achieve that I love these stardust glitter pens I think they are super great product I've had them forever um, and they're wonderful when you want this kind of effect. And of course her shoes are all glittery as well. We're gonna take the white pen and add a few little white dots here and there, just to kind of help, again, keep it sparkly and keep it very, very embellished. And 
even some little lines with the stardust glitter pen for the to kind of make the underskirt look like tulle and it's sparkly tulle, glittery tulle. Color in our mouse. And then we do have the fairy godmother, which I'm going to color her outfit in very much like I just did for the fairy godmother on the pumpkin. I feel like her dress is slightly different than the other one, but I did stick with the same colors. So it's going to be the purples and the pinks they're not on the same card, of course, so I don't, yeah, I need to pull that color out a little bit. There we go. That looks so much better. So cute. And believe it or not, I did the mouse first on this. I saved the mouse for last on all the other images, which is not my normal uh, MO at all. I generally will color in the character and then the outfit, but I was super excited to get to those outfits. Something great about any of the big bold images from Colorado Craft Company is I do feel like they're very easy to color. It really gives you a chance to kind of stretch your coloring creative muscles because they're not so teeny tiny. And um, I, I really like that. Gives you a little bit more opportunity to maybe try some, some different coloring techniques or incorporate more colors or shades in in the color family. So I decided to do her the base of her dress in the purples and then the little puff sleeves and the puffy trim around the bottom in pinks. And we of course will be glittering it all out just like before. It's all going to be shiny, bright, and glittery. <laughs> and then I will take all of these and die cut them with a scan and cut. You can use the coordinating dies, which are available for purchase now. It's really kind of whatever floats your boat. I just like to let you know exactly what I did. So I did do a little dotted technique with my darker pink marker on the sleeves and on the, the ruffly trim around her dress before taking the Stardust glitter pen and my white pen to give it just more, even more detail. But look at what a difference the Stardust glitter pen makes. I love it. Now we are going to take our images and kind of lay them out on our card bases and figure out where our sentiments are going to go. I did opt to use the same sentiment for both cards uh, to turn them both into birthday cards. The, they are from the, it is, pardon me, from the Fairy Godmother set. And the pumpkin Fairy Godmother image takes up a little more room up high. Both of the cards, the images fill pretty much the entire thing, but on one I have a little more room up high and on the other I don't. And because of that, I decided to take my sentiment and we are going to stamp it on the pumpkin because I feel like that's a great spot where I'm not trying to squish a sentiment into that area up high or whatever. I felt like that just was a little more natural. On the second card, I am going to put it up high because I do have about a third of the card space or maybe a fourth up high where I think it's going to fit in between these two characters. Just the fairy godmother and her wand really kind of fill that space and I don't want to drop her down where I cut off more of that. Um, I just felt like that wasn't going to work. And of course, here's where I see that I'm gonna need some more pumpkin. You can see that sweeping motion I'm doing with my marker, with my base color and then my darkest color, I'm flicking up, flicking down, and then I'll take my mid-tone color to finish that. Lots of great detail. I don't wanna over blend this one at all. I want that pumpkin texture. So using my Misty, I'm gonna put my first or the pumpkin image, I guess, in my Misty, and I am going to stamp my sentiment, which is have the dreamiest birthday ever. I love that. And we're gonna stamp that with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. 
I'm using the Rabbit Hole Designs Embossing Tool for Powder Tool first. And then we'll just simply stamp our greeting, sprinkle on the white powder and heat set it. And then on the second card background, we're going to of course put it up high. I'll clean my stamp and then reposition it since it's not gonna be in the same place for both cards. Lots of different sentiments in these stamp sets to consider, um, lots. Things like believe in yourself, if we got to pick our own fairy godmother, I'd pick you. And that's a two part, so you could do the first part on the front and the other part inside. Um, magic, yes please, your once in a, your once upon a time is now, pardon me. If I'm honest, I have to tell you I still read fairy tales and I like them best of all, a quote by Audrey Hepburn. Anything is possible if you trust magic, how, uh, magic time, it's possible. Um, the stamp set I'm not using today is the On Broadway where you can turn it into like a little scene that the mice are putting on. You're a tough act to follow. Cinderella, the rags to riches story, the best rags to riches story ever told. I really love the Anita Jerem on Broadway. Um, and you can turn it into a complete little scene. Have courage and be kind. So fun. So lots of really dreamy, fantastic sentiments. I did add some sparkles for my pumpkin card up there to like coming off the wand. I stamped those with clear embossing ink and heat set with silver embossing powder. And then I'm going to cover the back of my image with foam adhesive. And the big bummer is I put it down wrong the first time. So I am going to pull it off and I had to use some undo adhesive remover. I was super mad, but I did that off camera because that took a minute. Um, I got it off or I guess I did start to use it here on camera. And I don't want to ruin my background and I don't want to ruin my image. So I just simply poured this over the back and then peeled it up. And I will place it back down here in a minute. And that way I can straighten up my image. Sometimes it happens, whatever. <laughs> And then I will put foam adhesive on the back of Cinderella and we're going to put her down as well. I did flip my panel over and just trim off whatever is hanging off the edge of my panel. I thought I had cut that out, but I guess not. So that just kind of shows you how you can fix something as well if you need to. And then Cinderella goes right here and I felt naturally part of her tail does need to hang off the edge of the car just so it works better. These panels are A2 size, so it's gonna be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Sometimes I like to, to cut down my background so it leaves a little border. With the big bold images, I really prefer for the most part for them to go side to side, top to bottom. Um, because they're big and I feel like I need every teeny tiny little bit of space to really showcase the scene. So I did trim off a bit of her tail, but that worked fine. I love it. And then I like how it turned out. I think if I had picked a different sentiment, I could have put it up high, but like I really wanted to use that big sentiment. And I do think, I still think the pumpkin is the best place to put that. After I have that one all done, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the second card. So I'm gonna clean my stamp real fast before I reposition it and stamp that sentiment. So of course this sentiment is going to be stamped up high since I have the room for it. I'm just going to lay my images back out so I can be sure to get that right where I want it to go. It is gonna overlap the moon just a little bit. We're gonna center it, use our powder tool again, stamp with clear embossing ink and heat set with white embossing powder. Okay. 
And then just like before, I am going to adhere my images with some foam adhesive. Both images will slightly hang off either the right or the left, and I will trim off anything that hangs off of the side. And it gives you more of that snapshot look of you're looking at this scene or you've taken a picture of the scene, I guess maybe is how I should say that. So I'm gonna pop my fairy godmother down first and then we'll put Cinderella right here. She slightly overlaps the fairy godmother and she hangs off the edge just a little bit. So we're gonna lose a little of the tail, but I think that's okay. There we go. And again, just flip it over. And I like to use some nice long scissors. Now it comes time for embellishing. And to embellish this, I really wanted it to be sparkly. I'm of course gonna put some little jelly hearts uh, in blue here. And then I'm going to fill the background with some silver star confetti and like some little shooting star um, confetti pieces, which I think when it's laying flat like this, it's not quite as quite as impressive. When I'm finished adding things, I'm going to tilt this and show you the sparkle. And it so adds to that magical feel. Oh my goodness, you guys, I really feel like this is just that finishing touch that these cards needed to make them super special. I did take Nouveau Crystal Drops in Honey Gold, which is like a gold glitter for the wand. So it's going to be glittery as well. Everything about these cards is super glitterly, glittery. There we go. When I tip it, isn't that pretty? Uh, when I tip it, it um, has that great sparkle to it. So I wanted them to be very magical with all of the, the glitz and glitter. Then of course, a scattering of some stars and shooting stars on the second background as well. So, and a little heart is going to be adhered down below the greeting. I felt like that just kind of worked for this one. And then where I didn't like those little white, uh, like shooting star images on the, that I drew on the pumpkin, I'm gonna cover those with actual shooting star images and it really uh, fixed what I didn't like. So always kind of think of that. You could use stars um, or sequins, anything, if you do, do something similar and you don't love it, there are ways to kind of cover it up and fix it. Both of these panels will then be adhered to white top fold card bases from Simon Says Stamp, my favorite card bases. They come pre-cut and scored. They are perfect for your card making, whether you do side fold or top fold. And the Nouveau Crystal Drops in Honey Gold for the uh, magic wand here as well. And then some simple coordinating envelopes are going to be created with white envelopes from Simon Says Stamp, a little prize ribbon distress ink, and an image or two from um, the Anita Jerem stamp sets. And I'm they are big and bold. You don't want to cover the entire front of your envelope, so I'm, I'm stamping it off the edge. Very simple, still leaves plenty of room to write the address on there, but I love the little coordinating look of this. Isn't that cute? And then I will do the same thing for my second envelope. It's a very easy way to create a coordinating envelope. These are some of the most simple ones, but I kind of like how it looks without you know going all in with coloring for the envelope itself. Maybe I'll do that one of these days. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these Cinderella themed Colorado Craft Company cards featuring brand new products from the August 2022 Colorado Craft Company release. The supplies I used to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below for all of the details. We would love to have you as part of our growing community. Here is another video featuring Colorado Craft Company images that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, 
and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.